So the U.S. narrowly averted a historic default before the June 5th deadline. The world economy has also been spared a huge shock. But has the debt deal substantively addressed the risks to the U.S. fiscal sustainability or simply kicked the can down the road? Uh, Professor Sachs, as one of the world's foremost experts on economics and crisis prevention, what is your assessment of the deal? This is more kicking the can down the road. Uh, nothing fundamental was settled. There was a lot of theatrics in this, uh, kind of a political show, because uh, there really wasn't going to be a default. Uh, in fact, even the political divide between the Republicans and the Democrats is exaggerated. Mm. The basic problem in the United States is, well, the rich people don't want to pay taxes. The companies don't want to pay taxes. The U.S. government wants to spend a huge amount on wars and military. And uh, this has been going on for quite a long time. So uh, because of low taxes, uh, high military spending, we have a debt that continues to rise as a proportion of the national income. It was about 35% of our national income back in the year 2000. Now it's 95% of our national income. It will be well above 100% of our national income within a decade. And our political system is not addressing this at all. It's making minor adjustments, but there was no debate on taxes at all because neither political party wants to uh, do anything about taxes. There was really no recognition of the need for more social spending, even though we have a social crisis in the United States, and both political parties wanted to spend more on the military. So this is kicking the can down the road uh, with a lot of theatrics around it. Mm. Well, as you mentioned, the uh, military spending, which is also a concern for China because it caps non-military spending but maintains a very high defense budget, which is larger than the next 10 countries combined. And we know uh, one of the key objectives of the Pentagon is to deter China. How do you make sense of it? Well, uh, the United States is spending three times what China spends on the military and, as you say, more than the next 10 countries combined. I think it's a waste of money. I think if the U.S. and China sat down and negotiated over arms control, we would save a lot of money and be much better for the whole world. Uh, this is part of the U.S. problem right now, which is that uh, U.S. politicians think that military spending, even wars, because we've had many expensive wars in the last 20 years, is somehow good for the United States. But of course, it's not good for the United States. It's a mm. complete waste of money, and it's on the wrong track, in my opinion. Mm. We need diplomacy. We need arms control, uh, not this arms race. But this is uh, American politics right now. Mm. Professor Lee, what is your comment on this point? And we know that Japan and China are the two largest holders of U.S. treasuries, and they are at least willing to see that the U.S. would default. Is it a relief? Well, it is certainly a, a relief because China not only is a big uh, holder of U.S. treasury bill, but also China is a stakeholder of the mm. international financial system of which the U.S. still is at the center, let's face it. So, so I would say that a big sign of relief can be heard in China uh, with the passing of the, uh, the bill right now in the U.S. Congress. Uh, even though uh, for the time being, it is uh, only a temporary uh, solution as Jeff just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to resolve the issue, I fully agree with Jeff. Uh, fundamentally, the U.S. needs um, kind of a political, social political reform uh, in changing its uh, budgetary process. Mm. Okay, I often argue that, um, that uh, uh, somehow the U.S. budgetary process should take lessons from its central banking. Okay, 
in central banking, more or less, overall, overall, I would argue, I mean, this might be controversial, overall, the U.S. Federal Reserve manages its monetary policy much better than the U.S. federal government managing its budget, because the, the, the U.S. Fed is relatively independent of the federal government and relatively independent of politics. So in in uh, in China, uh, I am uh, I'm working with uh, scholars like Jeff Sachs. Um, we established uh, a society called Society for the Analysis of Government and Economics, uh, registered in, registered in London. We're trying to push for a reform or reforms of um, of the government in the economy, trying to uh, resolve such issues like uh, a, a budget deficit and um, debt savings. Hmm. Um, Professor Sachs, do you think reforms are necessary? And we know that the U.S. Congressional Budget Office projects interest payments may reach $600 billion this year and $1.4 trillion in 2020, uh, 2033. What is your overall view on the sustainability of U.S. debt at this level? The Congressional Budget Office makes a forecast uh, for the next uh, 30 years. And so they make a forecast to the year uh, 2052, actually, most recently. And they show the debt rising to 185% of uh, the national income if we continue on the current policies. Why? Because people are getting older in the United States, so there's more uh, pension payments, uh, health care is expensive, and we don't have a political uh, consensus at all on how to address this. And, and as uh, uh, David just said, uh, what's missing is a more fundamental consensus, even a longer term vision, because you notice uh, the politics are very short term. This agreement covers two years. There was no discussion about the long term, none. Uh, and there was no serious attempt to look at a long-term solution. Uh, this is the problem with the US politics right now at a deeper level. Uh, our political system, in my opinion, has become highly corrupt because of the big monetary contributions of billionaires and corporations. So those big campaign contributors say, give us tax cuts, and that's what Congress does. And then there's not enough money to spend on uh, important uh, things like education or modernization of infrastructure. So the public suffers that way. But then the politicians uh, like war more than they like diplomacy, which is another failure of the American politics. So the end result is large budget deficits that don't really get solved. Uh, and we need a deeper understanding of this. We don't even have a public debate about it, much less a consensus. So this idea of looking for a real deeper understanding uh, is important. We don't have a long-term process in U.S. politics right now. Uh, and even though we have uh, agencies like the Congressional Budget Office, which give forecasts, that doesn't turn into practical politics. Mm. So, Professor Lee, you talked about uh, changes needed, but without meaningful reforms, how seriously do surging deficits and debt servicing costs threaten the economy going forward? Well, in my view, it's uh, more serious than most people uh, have realized. Why do I argue that? Uh, the reason is that there are many economies, such as the Chinese economy, the um, the Indian economies, uh, which are emerging. And with the emergence of such new economies, let's call them new market economies, um, they are also providing uh, financial securities or financial products, such as their, such as their own treasury bill, their own uh, national sovereign debt, uh, which are becoming increasingly uh, possible to provide an alternative to provide alternatives to the U.S. Treasury bill, right? So, so that, so if I, I do worry. I worry quite a bit. 
I worry more than uh, many of my American friends that, uh, that, that these emerging market economies may come up with, um, with increasingly attractive financial instruments so that, so that international investors may one day down the road suddenly realize that why not? Why not we switch to uh, the RMB debt or Indian debt? When, when that time, when that moment comes, we will see a tremendous, tremendous financial crisis. The, the mother of all financial crisis, much more severe than 2008 financial crisis. Now, don't get me wrong. I pray, I, I pray this day would mm. not come because when it comes, there's no winners. There's no, the, including right. the Chinese economy, there will be a chaos. So, so Jeff, I, I don't know how worried you are. I am very worried. There are people in China pushing for international internationalization of RMB. I, I say I, I, I'm supportive of internationalization of RMB, but, but let's be careful. Let's be careful. I worry about a sudden switch from the US dollar to other currencies so that everybody will lose. Okay, I, I hope the process will be properly managed. Mm, indeed. So, Professor Sachs, you, you mentioned uh, the uh, deadlock uh, in the US politics. The uh, increasing political partisanship may have harmed the position of the United States in the world. As one of the uh, leading global de development economists, do you have any suggestions to how to find off-ramp from this? Well, uh, first of all, it's not really partisan politics because both political parties get the campaign contributions from the same corporations and the same rich donors. So a lot of what looks like rivalry between the Democrats and Republicans is more about personalities. Uh, both parties uh, actually respond to the same financial interests to a very large extent. It's very surprising because we talk about polarization, but it's not really polarization between the parties, it's between the rich and the poor. Uh, and uh, this isn't reflected in our politics very well. I think over time, the uh, role of China and India and uh, others in the world economy will grow and the relative role of the US dollar will decline. Uh, also, the American policymakers have been very destructive about the role of the dollar because they have used the dollar uh, in a very militarized way. For example, confiscating the foreign exchange reserves of Russia, $300 billion. I think this is completely uh, wrong if you want other countries to use your currency you don't yeah. confiscate uh, those reserves so i think the u.s policymakers have made very big mistakes in uh, militarizing uh, uh, the dollar because the means of payments should not be politicized this way it should be a technical operation so I personally believe that the renminbi will play a much larger role in the future. I believe that uh, the uh, uh, rupee will play a larger role, the ruble <laughs> and others. And I think that's fine. But what uh, uh, Professor Lee is saying is absolutely right. It should not come in the context of a big global crisis. It should be part of an evolutionary change in the international system. But I think it's a change in the right direction, actually. No one country uh, is going to dominate uh, the world economic or geopolitical system, uh, no matter what they think. It's going to be a multipolar system and a multi-currency system as well. Mm.